It is perhaps one of the most fundamental objects in the world of timekeeping and arguably one of the oldest. But I love the fact that it's so sort of deeply esoteric. It has this strange sort of mesmeric quality. On one hand, you're witnessing time, but on the other hand, it's completely sort of timeless and it actually, if anything, focuses your attention on the opposite of time, if that makes any sense. My name is Mark Newson, designer of all kinds of things, including timepieces, and in particular this hourglass, of which I have one of the special 100-piece edition for Hodinkee in front of me. So what we have with the object, we start with a lump of glass, and that lump of glass is turned into a tube, and that tube is gradually turned into this kind of waist-like shape. Then the bottom is closed, and then you've got to get this little teeny aperture the right diameter form the thing and then kind of close it up and seal it so as it can you know never be opened again and what's inside it is is really very important in the context of this object because most objects like this or that perform the same sorts of function as this have some kind of sand or grit or you know a fairly sort of non-specific material inside whereas i've chosen to put tiny little ball bearings in the spheres are coated in a type of a copper, and there are approximately 1.3 million of these little spheres in there. They provide a kind of a regularity, and that's what also provides this noise and this variety of sensorial things going on at one time. It's easy enough to design something. But during the whole process, you've got to kind of keep in the back of your mind that it's got to be manufacturable or makeable on some level. And from a technical perspective, this one was really quite difficult. The thing that's really challenging is to get the hole in between the two volumes of glass when the glass container is in a sort of liquid state. And the diameter of the hole has is, is got to be very precise so that it can only let a certain number of those little balls through at one time, which obviously is what controls the sort of timekeeping aspect. It's completely made and blown by hand in a technical glass factory. And those people alone are becoming practically impossible to find. There are almost certainly many more in past times, but now, now there aren't many. And that's another aspect of this project that I love, is the opportunity to seek out these skills that are dying and to, to be able to, to work with these people, perhaps for the last time in history. I think in general terms, one encounters this object, obviously primarily through the way it looks. And, and I, I guess it's safe to say that, that as is the case with a lot of the objects that I've designed there, they're quite tactile. They, I think, invite people to want to touch them. And the great thing about timepieces is that they do require a level of physical interaction. This object in particular, I mean, it doesn't do anything until you sort of make it do something. And it doesn't start telling the time until you tell it to start <laughs> telling the time, which I love as well, because you can kind of stop and start time at will. I kind of love that idea, really. 